What's up everyone, Dylan here. I wanted to hop on and do a brief overview of what's been occurring in the S&P 500 futures market. Right In this video, I'm going to go over one of the main components that is driving this market higher. So with that said, we'll hop right into it. So as you could see on June 2nd, the S&P 500 futures broke above this key breakout resistance area and ever since then, it has managed to rally uh, 3% higher in the last two weeks. So right after the market broke out of that resistance level, it spent a few days consolidating sideways before heading higher and gaining momentum to the upside on June 8th, okay? Ever since June 8th, we have been seeing higher highs and higher lows, okay? Despite that fact, folks continue to short, okay? And I'm not talking about spec trades where they have, you know, good risk reward and solid confirmations. I'm talking about the folks that are shorting and doubling down, tripling down, disregarding any form of risk management just because they think the market has to drop, right? They're looking at all of these different negative catalysts that are weighing in on the market, right? Hypothetically, right? You have inflation uh, that's that still persists, right? You have uh, the, the Fed, their target inflation number is 2%, and we're more than double from that. Uh, you have, you know, the recent bank crisis uh, that happened, you have uh, a tight labor market, right? I could go on and on listing negative, um, you know, arguments that the bears will come up with. However, you could clearly see that the market does not give a crap and it continues to move higher and higher, okay? So those individuals are letting their, uh, you know, their ego or their stubbornness get in the way of you know what's what's really happening on the chart okay so what you like i said what we're seeing is folks doubling down tripling down getting into short positions and the major component that is driving this market higher uh, or one of them is positioning okay and when i say positioning what i mean by that is coming up with the idea of which side of the spectrum is uh, undergoing pressure okay so this works on both sides it, it works with shorts and longs okay in this case when you have a lot of shorts undergoing pressure right when they you know kind of take enough pain right and they have to cover those shorts you get what's called a short squeeze right which is literally just them squeezing out of their short positions which then adds buying pressure into the market and as a result it fuels a rally higher okay so that's what we're seeing so I'm going to go deeper into that and hopefully by the end of this video you have a clear understanding. So, like I said, despite this recent rally, you've seen we've we've been seeing folks uh, get shorter and shorter and shorter betting against the market uh, assuming that it's due for a massive correction. Okay? How do we know this? Okay, there's a few different ways to you know kind of figure out, and basically what you're trying to do is is you're trying to dig deep into the psychology aspect of the market and uh, kind of paint a picture, right? Try try to come up with a narrative of what's happening beyond the price action. So um, essentially. I'm going to go over uh, what we saw yesterday during the Fed decision, okay? So this was yesterday's move, right? You had the market, um, you know, make higher highs, higher lows leading up to the Fed decision. And then once the Fed decision came out, you had a sharp rally or sharp downturn, okay? So once the, uh, the, the rate came out, you saw a uh, you know a 50 point drop in the market okay why did it drop despite the fed uh, pausing 
interest rates okay so they didn't hike yesterday and a lot of people would perceive that to be bullish but instead it resulted in a market downturn okay the reason that is is because of the dot plot okay um, so essentially 12 out of the 18 fed officials voted for dots uh, for the year-end fed funds rate at 5.625 percent right in other words, they're pricing in two more rate hikes this year, okay? You go back a week ago and uh, there was like an 80% probability that they were going to price one rate hike. So now that they're pricing in another surprise rate hike, right, on top of the one that was, uh, you know, expected, uh, what this does is it, it, it basically, if this occurs, that will um, you know, ha that will make the economy have higher rates for longer. And when you have higher rates for longer, um, you know, it increases the chances for a material economic slowdown and, you know, a recession. Okay. So as a result, when that dot plot forecast came out, the market moved lower. Okay, and if you're short, right, and you have a short bias already, and you see that they're now pricing in an additional rate hike, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna add to your shorts, okay? So that is what we saw yesterday when we had this 50 point aggressive move lower. You had the already shorts, right? You had the existing shorts adding to their positions and i would like to assume that new shorts entered into the market okay now why did this downturn right why did this down move um fail to gain traction okay so you could see it failed to break below the prior session lows okay the reason that is in my opinion is because those dots are data dependent, meaning it's just a speculation. So despite 12 out of 18 Fed officials pricing in two more rate hikes, it's not a 100% chance that that will happen, okay? What I mean by data dependent is based on how uh, data comes out in the next few months will, you know, basically figure out what happens from there. So as long as inflation continues to move lower, right? If the CPI continues to show disinflation and, you know, you see a nice downturn in the inflation readings and you see growth start to also slow, then the Fed does not have to, you know, do that, right? They do not have to do additional rate hikes. Okay, so um, basically, right, what I'm trying to say is, despite the market coming off 50 handles, that down move did not last because it's data dependent. Basically, the market participants don't believe it, right? They're saying, okay, the dot plots show that two additional rate hikes are likely. However, it's not a 100% chance of happening. So as a result, let's buy this dip. Okay, that's what is that's what the bulls were saying. So like I said, for the shorts that were, were already bearish bias going into the Fed, now they see this where the dot plots are higher than a week prior. It's making them get short and short and short more and more and more. Right, they're doubling down, they're they're tripling down, they're quadrupling down, and what that's doing is it's making the shorts more and more painful. Okay, very, very, very clear, and that is why positioning is one of the main components of this rally higher because there's only so much pain that these shorts can endure. And once it gets to their just, you know, liquidation point, they have to then buy back those lots, which makes the, ra the, the rally that much more aggressive, okay? And that is what we saw today. These shorts 
or the folks who got short because of this news, right? They did not get any continuation lower, right? Uh, coming into t- this morning, they were like, okay, the market's heading lower. It's kind of it's kind of rolling over. Let's hope for more downside pressure. And uh, they see that this, you know, this this drop uh, fails to sustain any traction, and you get a rip higher. And this rip higher is likely the sh- the shorts that initiated here or added here that had to get stopped out. And this is the outcome, a a very aggressive rally to the upside. So like I said, hopefully you're understanding how I'm kind of coming up with a narrative of who's shorting, why they're shorting, where they're shorting, right? This this particular day yesterday for the Fed, uh, Fed meeting was, in my opinion, very, very clear. Okay. Another reason to see which side is, you know, struggling is looking at the COT report. So this is public information that you guys all have access to. Uh, You go to uh, cftc.gov and every week they come up with, you know, they come out with a new report. So I believe it's dropped on Friday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to have a look at um, the COT report as of June 6th. For whatever reason, this is the most recent one that I could find uh, on their website. So uh, this is the one we're going to be looking at. Okay. So this is from Point Blank Trading on Twitter. Uh, I got to shout him out or shout her out. Um, So essentially, this gives uh, what I just said a deeper... Uh, you know, visualization and and this, what I'm going to show you is, is is quite scary. It, basically, what I'm showing you is is a a visual a visualization of how the shorts are just getting absolutely steamrolled. Meaning, the higher this rally goes, the more painful it's going to become for these folks. And as a result, they're either going to continue doubling down, tripling down, or they're going to liquidate, which is going to fuel the market even higher. Okay, so right here you have the longs right below, and then you have the shorts. Okay, so these are S&P 500 futures um, or futures in general. I don't even know, to be honest. Um, Oh, yeah. So S&P 500 futures. Okay. So from uh, May 30th to June 6th, these were the changes. So long positions were uh, subtracted. There there was uh, 4,070 less long. So anyone who was long, there was 4,000 that, you know, either took profits or, you know, exited for whatever reason, you know, whatever the case may be, those might even be, um, you know, uh, you know, we could come up with speculations, but overall, we're just going to, you know, talk about the specifics and the broad numbers here. Okay, so like I said, long positions uh, came down 4000 lots. Uh, Whereas look at these shorts. So not only is the shorts way higher than the longs, but they also increased shorts by 41,000 lots, okay? Notice those difference. You have 181,000 longs and 758,000 shorts, okay? And not only did the shorts, uh, you know, outweigh the longs by that much, but they also added to it from, from uh, what was this? May 30th to June 6th. Okay, that's crazy. And this next uh, this next slide that I'm going to show you is it, it gives you a cleaner view of what's happening behind the scenes. And it's crazy, in my opinion. So look at these net positions. Okay, you have 181,000 longs, right? Call it 182,000. Then you have 758,000 shorts. Okay, so that's a net spread of 576,000. Okay, that goes to show you how many folks 
are still short despite this recent rally and that's what we saw today so like i said one of the main components of this recent rally is positioning the fact that there are many shorts underwater that are enduring a sick amount of pain okay and like i said they're they're disregarding risk management okay these these folks are just just really pounding down thinking that there's going to be an imminent uh you know reversal or crash or pullback whatever the case may be okay and and that's not to say that i don't recommend shorting here okay if you have a a proper plan that has solid risk parameters beyond them right to you know to fit within your risk parameters take it i encourage it okay uh, but if you do what many folks are doing, which is just blindly, they continue to, to average into shorts with, with no proper plan and no proper risk management, then that's a problem in plain English. It's, that's a big problem. And that is why we're seeing this rally. So uh, just to give you a further, um, you know, representation of, of, you know, visualizing this. That data was from June 6th, okay? So from June 6th, which is here, like I said, an additional 41,000 shorts initiated at that point, right? From May 30th to June 6th, okay? So you have several hundred thousand shorts from June 6th and hypothetically, if those folks are still in and added more and more, guess what? They just went through a 3.5% rally since that point. Okay? So the more short these folks get, it's likely that the market is going to continue higher and higher because it's the market's goal to squeeze those folks out. Okay, it's all a representation of, you know, liquidity, right? Which side is offsides and uh, so on and so forth, okay? So hopefully this video is, was helpful and, and you guys kind of get a, a pretty good understanding of what's happening and why this is happening. Um, so positioning, very, very, very important. As you get better at trading, you will figure out how to really read beyond the candlesticks more to figure out which side is short and which side is long and, you know, which side is enduring more pain. So uh, it gives you a really good edge in the market and uh that's about it if you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe and next week i'll come out with another video so i'm going to try my best to do one video per week and uh hopefully you guys like it so that's about it peace